the Microsoft Surface has been confusingly blurring the lines between tablet and laptop since 2012. And like many devices like this, planned obsolescence has hit these things hard. Which is why today we're saving this one from the garbage and installing the latest version of Ubuntu Linux on it. We're gonna see if this eight-year-old tablet has any life left to give. Ow, so stay tuned. And if you think that technology shouldn't have an arbitrary expiration date, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. The original Microsoft Surface debuted back in 2012 with an ARM CPU and a really weird version of Windows called Windows RT. But the first Surface Pro in 2013 was based on an actual Intel chip. Well, I have here a somewhat more mature Surface Pro. This one has a KB Lake i5 7300U, eight gigs of RAM and runs Windows 10 Pro, nice. And I'm pretty sure the person I got this from was a day or two from taking it to Best Buy to be recycled. Because according to Microsoft, you need at least a Surface Pro 6 to run Windows 11. Anyway, I don't wanna run Windows 10 or 11 on this thing. Thanks to the Linux Surface project, we should have quite good hardware support here in pretty much any major Linux distro. But before we get into that, let's take a minute to appreciate this thing for what it is, was. The Surface Pro is actually a very nice, well-constructed device. The screen is actually beautiful and the touchscreen is quite responsive. It has USB 3.0 display port, a built-in kickstand. On the bottom here is the magnetic dock for the keyboard. Check this out. This weird port on the side here is actually the power connector for Microsoft's own version of MagSafe. All in all, it's a quite nice device. It's a shame Microsoft wants you to chuck it in the garbage. Let's get Ubuntu going on this thing. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, delete me. Okay, quick story. When I was a wee young naive retro, I shared my full name and childhood home address on a vintage computing forum. The search engines quickly picked this up and then the data brokers got it. And for years, that childhood home address haunted me online. This is exactly the kind of thing that today's sponsor Delete Me can help to address. Delete Me not only found all this information floating out there, but they showed me a ton of data brokers and websites that have it and helped me delete it. I guess that's why they're called Delete Me. But seriously, it's harder than ever to keep your private information private. And with all the dangers out there lurking on the internet, like phishing scams, identity theft, that one person on Reddit who really didn't like that thing you posted, it's more important than ever to protect your private information. So get 20% off your Delete Me US consumer plan when you go to joindeleteme.com slash action retro and use promo code action retro at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash action retro code action retro. And thanks again, Delete Me for sponsoring today's video. All right, I have a nice fresh copy of Ubuntu 2410, but in order to install this, we need to turn off some of Microsoft's guardrails. So I'm going to power this on and hold the up volume button to get us into UEFI. We need to go to security, turn off secure boot, turn off TPM, change boot configuration, USB storage first. And now we will chuck in our installer Restart. Oh yeah, I love that big red bar. That's how we know we're doing a good job. Oh nice, sound works out of the box. We do have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, neat. Let's just do a nice full install of Ubuntu on here. Oh, turn off BitLocker. All right, let's see if I can just nuke BitLocker from Gparted. Goodbye Windows 10. Oh, there we go. And hopefully let's jump cut to a completed install. All right, we have a fresh install of Ubuntu 2410. I guess let's take stock of what works and what doesn't work 
out of the box. Obviously, touch screen doesn't work. Screen brightness does. Audio buttons work. Frogfind.com. Yeah, we are on the internet. All right, even without the touch screen, I'm already kind of enamored with this machine running Linux. Does screen rotation work? No. And yes, I still use NeoFetch even though it's not maintained. But yeah, there's our quad core i5 7300U at 3.5 gigahertz, Intel HD graphics 620 and eight gigs of RAM. I mean, honestly, not too bad of a spec. All right, let's go to the GitHub page for the Linux Surface project. This should be fairly simple to install. Detailed setup guide, Debian Ubuntu. All right, just two commands and then a sudo apt update. And now let's install the Linux Surface stuff. Now we should just update grub and I think we can reboot. All right, it can be tricky to get into the grub menu. Boy, that's tiny. But here we can select the different kernels so I can choose the Surface Dash 1 version of 6.10. Oh, do we have touch screen? We do! <laughs> awesome. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, check it out, look. Oh, it's so good. We have ourselves an Ubuntu tablet and Gnome on a touchscreen is freaking awesome. Now we're at 200% scale, yeah. Makes sense. Automatic screen brightness, I don't think so. We're on balanced performance. I mean, we can go to power saver for now. We are in a tablet. Oh, this is so freaking cool. All right, let's see if rotation works. Ha. Yes, it does, and it's fast too. Look at that. Oh, amazing. Oh, this is absolutely amazing. Oh, look at the snap to the side of the screen. Who would want to throw this thing away? I'm so happy with this so far. Okay, let's see if we can have some fun with it. All right, obviously we need to install Steam on here. Potentially unsafe, I don't think so. I trust Mr. Gabe. And thanks to Steam's built-in Proton, we can install and usually play Windows games just fine. Of course, a game like Vampire Survivors should work really well because this is built for mobile devices. Yeah, works just fine. I'm sure that's normal. All right, well, I'm very surprised to see that the game does in fact load and run. Although the HD Intel graphics are having some trouble with this 2K display, I'm sure. Okay, of course we have to see how this handles heavy web apps. Yeah, it seems to run pretty well, actually. Hey, I know that guy. Yeah, well, as you might expect, a Core i5 runs Firefox just fine. I recently dug out my magic cards and I've been making a new EDH deck. This big lovely screen would be pretty fun to play test it. Uh, yeah, seems to work pretty well. Play my commander here. I really like the old Cheerios archetype. Zero casting cost, the best casting cost. Now, of course, an important question would be what's the battery life like compared to this thing running Windows? And honestly, I think it's a little hard to say at this point because this thing is, well, it's eight years old. So only time will tell, although I think I'm gonna use this thing as my new couch device for a while because it's pretty freaking sweet. And well, I've just been using this thing as a tablet. It's amazing how well Ubuntu and the modern GNOME desktop work as a purely touchscreen environment. It works as well as my iPad does, and in fact, it's nicer to use than my iPad because the screen is bigger and it fits a little nicer in my hand due to the dimensions of it. And it's really cool to know that I have a full Linux environment just sitting right beneath the surface, unlike my super locked down iPad. Now, 
I do think that this thing might need a new battery. It lasted for a few hours, but then went from 50% to 0%, but we'll save that fix for another video. So yeah, I think there's a pretty big gulf between when a company says something is obsolete and when you actually can't use it for anything anymore. This is totally useful as an everyday computing device, just here running mostly open source software. So thank you so much to the Linux Surface team for making this possible. I will of course link everything down in the description below, but that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.